Hello. Yes, that's right. You see, Mr. Farage, if you're relying on the likes of Boris Johnson, or Andrea Leadsom for that matter, to save Brexit, then you're dreaming it's not going to happen. I understand you've got to try and work within the system to stop the betrayal, but the system's not going to allow you to do that, right? The system needs smashing, right? Literally. You see, what you've got to do now, Mr. Farage, otherwise, your 25 years of campaigning to get out of the European Union will have all been in vain, and Brexit will be betrayed. What you've got to do now, you've got to rally, mobilise, the 17.4 million Brexiteers into a political force to smash these Tories, these traitors, sellouts, phony little Englanders, phony patriots, because if they're not stopped in their betrayal of Brexit, right, we've had it, we're doomed, we're not going to have another go of freeing this country and its people from the European Union, and also it's opening the door for Jeremy Corbyn, because if Corbyn is elected Prime Minister, God forbid, right, he'll just open the borders and let every country in the world into Britain until it's literally destroyed. It no longer is Britain, because he's another one that hates this country with a vengeance. You see, the likes of Theresa May, Vincent Price, the likes of her, it's a strange sort of uh, relationship she has with Britain. It's like with Edward Heath. I don't believe the genuine patriots. I don't believe they've got the best interests of Britain at heart. There's a perverseness with people like that, that get some sort of sick pleasure in destroying this country without actually coming out and saying so, right? It's like uh, Philby Burgess and McLean. It's like that John Le Carre, is that how you pronounce that? The spy writer, when he said Philby was not a, an intellectual uh, dreamer or Marxist or whatever. He was a deviant, and that's why he betrayed Britain. And I, re I believe that's why the likes of Edward Heath and even uh, Theresa May, Vincent Price, I reckon that's why they have and are betraying Britain. There's a perverseness with them. It's probably no different in this, the perverseness Jerry, Jeremy Corbyn has, except this is probably ideological, a Marxist Trotskyite outlook. Whereas the likes of, without diversifying, I'm going off on a tangent here, the likes of Edward Heath and Theresa May, the, there's a hatred for Britain somewhere in them. I don't know what exact, I can't put my finger on it, but it's like the spy writer said that it's a deviancy this against their own country, you know. But anyway, that's another video on itself. Uh, so you've got to organise the 17.4 million Brexiteers, Nigel Farage, into a political force, right? Otherwise, these bastards are going to sell us out. They're going to betray us. And it could open the door for Jeremy Corbyn. You see, there's no real difference, if you ask me. They only differ on economics. One is just going to destroy Britain quicker than the other. That's all. That's the only real difference. You see, Mr. Farage, like I've said before, you foolishly, prematurely left UKIP, and it's in the hands of the enemy now, right? Jared Barton, uh, Henry Bolton, and all the rest that are in there, there's a few more as well. Who they work for, I don't know. The security services, or one of its criminal proxies, Nick Lawes' Hope Not Hate, Jerry Gable's Satellite Magazine, I don't know. Maybe all three, I just don't know, but it doesn't matter. It's what they're doing that counts. Right, they have control of UKIP now. That was the force, the powers that be were worried about. They knew the betrayal was coming. The security services obviously knew what Theresa May uh, had planned. Of course they knew. So they had to neutralise, get control of UKIP, and that's what they've done, right? Because the backlash coming over the horizon was going right to Nigel Farage. And UKIP, but you foolishly left, you left too soon. So UKIP now is in the hands of the enemy, right? So by the time the backlash gets to UKIP, UKIP's going to be some laughing joke, some comedy sketch with Count Dankula and all the rest of them in it, and Tommy Robinson. Does he get, uh, is it going to be decided today is it at a meeting, membership vote or something, regardless whether he's going to be allowed into um, UKIP? But I don't think it really matters. I think those that are in there now and the present leadership with the war on Islam 
will just alienate it and polarise it in the eyes of the public. You see, the public don't want a war over Brexit. The public... God bless them because they're just humble people. They will roll over in the end and they will accept what Theresa May offers them because they don't want any trouble, let alone a trouble with Islam. And the enemies of Britain, the enemies of UK populism, British nationalism, they know how the, what makes the public tick. They know how they think. The public doesn't want a war with anyone. So anyone pushing this war with Islam is on a loser. And the powers that be know this only too well. That's why they're... Uh, Jared Batten's pushing this war on Islam because it, 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 it's a no-win. You, you, you're going to be doomed. You're going to alienate the public. The public don't want a war with anyone, right? They don't want a war over Brexit, let alone a war with Islam. So you can see the tactics the secret state is employing in alienating people now from UKIP. So, Mr Farage, and those around you, those you trust those that have influence, you've got to now organise the 17.4 million Brexiteers into a political force and smash these treacherous Tory bastards. Otherwise, we're doomed to have had it. We won't get a second chance at an EU referendum and we'll be a slave to the EU. OK, thank you.